Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, let me start by saying how much I enjoyed uh, working uh, with the member from Bow Valley uh, uh, on the Environment Committee uh, and uh, the trip that we took out west. Uh, actually, we were just having a, a conversation, and, and this motion uh, was actually derived from that trip when we visited a ranch uh, in Alberta, 11,000 acre ranch with 900 uh, head of cattle grazing uh, on the ranch. It was, uh, it was the epitome of, of sustainability and conservation and farming today. And I really uh, commend him for this, uh, uh, for this motion. Uh, and I am uh, so happy to be able to speak uh, in support of the motion. So uh, thank you very much for, for your friendship and, and for all your hard work on, on, this, uh, on this issue. Um, I have a lot of farmers in my, in my rural riding and along with indigenous people, you won't find anyone closer to the land than farmers. Their hard work, 365 days a year, not only provides for their own families, but for, the, for every family in the cities as well. When you're as close to the land as they are, and when you depend on its bounty as much as farmers do, uh, then it only makes sense that you would take care of it as best you can. Farmers are really some of the original environmentalists in many ways. Take, for example, K Chris Kennedy of Topsy Farms on Amherst Island in my riding of Hastings, Lennox, and Addington. This cooperative family farm has a flock of over 1,100 breeding sheep um, there on the island in Lake Ontario, and the family has a deep respect for the environment. They raise their sheep in as natural a way as possible, with no growth hormones, with no pesticides on their land. Uh, they've also helped to create a network of gardeners on Amherst Island to contribute fresh food to shelters and food programs in the area. Their lands provide habitat for the countless birds and butterflies that use Amherst Island as a stop on their migratory path. Since they've planted hedgerows and yards, uh, and yards that attract these species, they even have a certificate as a monarch butterfly way station. Chris also tells me that he's put up about a half a mile of fencing to keep the sheep out of Lake Ontario in order to protect the water, and they receive funding under the Species at Risk program to help them do it. It's also great to see that Frank Drew, a beef farmer in Odessa, is also taking part in a Species at Risk fencing uh, project on his farm through the Ontario Soil and Crop Improvement Association. He let me know that his fencing will limit livestock from accessing Millhaven Creek, which has an abundance of wildlife, including many species of waterfowl and other birds, as well as turtles, snakes, and fish. Mr. Speaker, or Madam Speaker, sorry, we had a switch. <laughs> Madam Speaker, uh, so many farming practices are passed down from generation to generation, and Topsy Farms tries to follow the lead of those who farmed before them by maintaining um, uh, by maintaining, excuse me, uh, white hedgerows and using selective cutting practices in their woodlot. I've also spoken to a lot of people in the local woodlot, woodlot association in my riding, and they really do care about using the most sustainable practices because they want to be able to pass down the land to the next generation in as good a shape or better than they got it, which is so indicative of all farmers uh, today. Farmers know their land down to the smallest detail, and Chris will tell you that from growing the abundance of field, uh, that the growing abundance of field mushrooms on his land during wet years is showing how the land is slowly increasing in organic matter. And that's very good stewardship since the soil in Amherst Island is very thin. I'm also really grateful when I speak to farming community to hear how willing and eager they are to do outreach and teach people about uh, the work they do. Topsy Farms is often participating in activities that foster an understanding of the relationship between animals, people, and the land, whether it's hosting uh, schools, 4-H members, or workshops for professors and students from the Environmental Studies Program at Queen's University, which is nearby to my riding. They've also contributed produce for traditional medicines that, um, uh, that me medicines made at the Tyne and Nega Mohawk Territory. And these are the type, kinds of activities that so many of our farmers do because they love the land and they want to teach others about the love of the land as well. A very good friend of mine uh, also has a, a farm and a very large uh, sugar bush operation as well in the northern part of my riding, uh, in the northern part of, of the township that I live in. His name is uh, Terry Gervais, 
And uh, he bought the farm in the early 80s and, and uh, uh, worked the bush and, 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 and grazed cattle uh, uh, on the land that he then brought to his restaurant that he owned in Toronto. Uh, and people, his beef became famous throughout the city of Toronto uh, because, you know, it was grass-fed, it was naturally fed, it was very sustainably farmed. Uh, and he also was one that would bring a number of school groups, indigenous communities, 4-H clubs. Uh, he would have pancake breakfast purely for the sole opportunity to educate people on the importance of conservation and, and modern-day uh, farming practices that can be developed uh, uh, pretty much anywhere in farming communities. By the way, Madam Speaker, Topsy Far Farms will be on the Discovery Channel later this fall on the show Tougher Than It Looks. Now, I tried my hand at uh, shearing a sheep once at an O'Hara's Mill Homestead and Conservation Area in Madoc, and uh, it really is tougher than it looks. And I was only operating the hand crank uh, on the old-fashioned shears. Uh, and boy, I'll tell you, by the end of about 45 minutes, you were pretty much cooked. Uh, and I don't know how they do it. Uh, you know, sheep after sheep after sheep. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, another great example from my riding of farmers taking an active role in conservation and stewardship is Cam Mather. He's an organic farmer at Sunflower Farm in, in uh, Tamworth, and he and his wife have actually taken things one step further and lived completely off the grid. Uh, Cam says that he and his wife Michelle used to say that they owned 150 acres of land, uh, but now they like to suggest that they are temporary custodians of 150 acres of land. This is the kind of intergenerational point of view that farmers have and that fosters their sense of stewardship for the land uh, to pass it on to the next generation. There is, a, there is active work being done across my riding from, by the farming community on conservation and stewardship of the land. In fact, uh, up in, in Madoc uh, next month, uh, there's going to be a symposium on caring for the land organized by the Land Between. Uh, in partnership with the Hastings Stewardship Council and Curve Lake First Nation. A, the nonpartisan gathering is meant to share observations of the la natural landscape and to give voice to the people and their life on the land. It brings together our farmers, hunters, anglers, beekeepers, gardeners, nature lovers, indigenous peoples, you name it. Uh, all stakeholders are represented at this, uh, at this uh, conference. Uh, Ms. Madam Speaker, these are just a few examples of the countless farmers working hard as stewards of the land in conservation, and there are many, many, many more. I also wanted to thank Reese uh, Walt. Uh, she's the Ontario Federation of Agriculture rep in my region, and she shared a lot of information with me about the Canada-Ontario Environmental Farm Plan. This plan is an assessment of, that is voluntarily prepared by family farms to increase their environmental awareness on their farms. It has a workshop process where farmers highlight their farm and farm's environmental uh, strengths, identify areas of concern, and set realistic action plans with timetables to improve environmental conditions. And it's important to point out that, that the idea for environmental farm plans originated from the Ontario farm community itself. Farmers were involved in every stage of developing the plan through the Ontario Farm Environmental Coalition. This program continues to be delivered to the farm community by the Ontario Soil and Crop Improvement Association through funding provided by the Growing Forward II, uh, which, as you know, is federal, provincial, territorial initiative. And Madam Speaker, I just wanted to say how much I'm looking forward to seeing the great work that our Minister of Agriculture is doing on the next uh, agriculture policy framework with, uh, with our government is supporting in the 2000, budget 2017. It's going to help uh, the sector grow sustainably, mitigate greenhouse gas emissions, and adapt to climate change. I really appreciate the hard work that he is doing for farmers across the country. And lastly, Madam Speaker, and if you'll indulge me, I was at the Hastings County Plowing Match and Farm Show again this summer to speak with farmers. It's the greatest, it's the biggest plowing show, well, the greatest two, in eastern Ontario. I just wanted to say a big thank you to all the volunteers who, who launched the Farm 911, the Emily project there. It's a project in memory of Emily Trudeau that encourages farmers to put up uh, 911 signs at all entrances to their farms. I encourage everyone to visit the nine, uh, Farm 1 911 uh, website for more information to get involved with this life-saving project. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate,